Hey, people, so loves. It's Kimberly with Celestial Juju. And we're going to talk about this full moon, the full moon that's coming up on the 21st. Is that right? Of July. And it's the second full moon that we have had in Cancer. That is happening. They both were Capricorn full moons, which makes it a blue moon. So that fir that first full moon was at the solstice, and um, I did a whole thing on that. So you can go back and 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 watch it. If there's there's, it's still in the same houses because it's still in Cancer. So whatever it was at that energy, I don't remember if I did a ritual on that one. I have to go back and look and see. I'll put a link in des description. So this moon, this full moon. It's like I said, it's actually the second one that we've had in Capricorn this year. So the first one, the energy um, with it, if you remember, if you've been following me, that I mentioned that this first full moon would open a window of heightened tension peaking around the 15th because we knew that we had that conjunct with uh, Mars and uranus coming in at the degree that it was so we've had that we have went through it we've still been in the afterfall of that energy so you can go back and watch that one too about the algo energy and all that that was there for us so where are we where are we at you know we're we've been in this place of tension and we've got capricorn trying to move on this whole energy of this full moon could be extension leading to a release of emotional tensions that signal significant changes in the collective that first full moon set up a tight t-square with a grand cross involving the sun the moon and neptune which marked a transition point in the end of the era okay so this is um this energy is heightened with old belief system fears that control us detaching us from our true purpose distracting us from our true purpose as we transition into this age of aquarius we are collectively moving toward planetary evolution and aligning with the new cosmic blueprint so so on this video I'm going to go through what this moon means, the energy of this full moon, what it is to the collective, what it is for you and your sign individually, and I'll do an energy transmission at the end. So that's that's what we've got. That's what we've got going on. What's coming up? So this this moon, in a traditional sense, farmers often act sense. It's called the Buck Moon. And that's because that's when the deer buck and I guess other buck too um, shed their antlers to grow the new. Yes, that's what the energy is. It's all about shedding the old, the old heart stuff so you can grow new. So um, this full moon is significant because it follows that. Uh, Mars entering Gemini and I did a whole thing on that so you can go look at the Mars Gemini I released it Thursday night I think um, and I did a long detailed with it where I went into what the shadow is of the Mars in Gemini for the collective and what it the what the energy is for you the action and also the shadow side of what it can bring to you so I went into a deep dive with that one and i went all the way through the six weeks period and i think i said four weeks on the thing but then i gave you all the dates which actually adds up to six weeks so we're going to be in that energy energy for um six weeks so that is forming a conjunction with jupiter on into um in, in this time period indicating rapid changes ahead and um we we've already seen some events that transpired throughout July, and now we're at the point of no return. 
moving into a phase of significant transformation. So this energy around the, around the full moon is intense. It's indicating a completion of cycles and a start of something new. The symbolism, you can't make this shit up, you all, of the degree of the placements of this 29 degrees of ending and zero degrees for new beginnings will reinforce this thing. And we're seeing a shift away from the old uh, hierarchies of power and control towards a more liberated and self-actualization future. It's like the cosmos is whispering. It's whispering in the energy. So the aspects of this chart um, suggest significant endings and new beginnings. Neptune's placement at 29 degrees of Pisces in this trine with the full moon emphasizes the end of the age of Pisces and the illusions that have been associated with it. This full moon is in conjunct with Pluto and it's significant. There's a significant, it signifies power and emotional release and transformation. Mars entering Gemini and trying Pluto indicates intense transformation, wars, conflicts, conflicting opinions, rapid dissimulation of information and there could be radical breakdowns and breakthroughs leading to a renewed lease on empowered and liberation this this period is marked by a shift in power dynamics with individuals reclaiming their power and breaking free from the old constraints the focus is on self-actualization and embracing authenticity and rejecting external validation so you all the symbol sim the sabian symbol the sabian symbol symbols were channeled oh i don't even know that date now i think they were in the 40s and so this lady she channeled each degree around the whole wheel and so each degree has this channeled symbolism to it and so this 20 this where this is at in this 29 degrees this Sabian, Sabian symbol, and I'm just bringing it up because, man, you cannot, I mean, it just shows how we cannot make this stuff up. It brings in another layer of this. The full moon at 29 degrees of Capricorn is associated with the aspect of a secret meeting of men responsible for world affairs, highlighting the end of old power structures. And the sun at 29 degrees of cancer is linked, is linked to a daughter of the American Revolution, symbolizing revolutionary changes. What are we watching? I mean, it's like crazy how we have a script of this and the way it's playing out. So the summary of these two full moons marks a crucial point of transformation where we're breaking free from the old belief systems and moving towards new empowered future. And the emphasis is on personal growth, being authentic and the rejection of external control as we collectively transform into this new age of Aquarius. So we're in that time period of that. I don't really think it's the new age of Aquarius that we're actually at the point now. I think we're, we're far off from that, but it's the, it's a wake up call to show us what's going to happen. What has to break free before we can really step into that energy. So on July the 21st, the Capricorn full moon, uh, making it in, uh, since it's the second, making it the blue moon, this rare occurrence of having these two full moons consecutively in the same sign illuminates these areas of your natal chart, drawing significant focus on the energy. You might feel purpose driven, ambitions, and ready to create a solid plan for your future. Divinely guided. Uh, so, uh, for some, that uh, what was real uh, revealed during this first Capricorn full moon. So go back and look at your journals. What happened to you since then? 
what's happened in the collective since then? They need to be looking at their journals. They need to be journaling. So for some, what was revealed during that first Capricorn full moon will now reach resolution, offering a sense of relief and completion. This full moon in conjunct with Pluto in Aquarius indicating that your future self is guiding you toward new vision. The only limit moving forward is your imagination. That's the only thing. How can your imagination limit you? And how do you move past that, past those belief structures and into what you really are here for? The sky is inc incredibly active with many aspects, influences how we can navigate this energy. And the understanding these aspects can help you make the most of this illumination. So all full, full moons are um, oppositions you know, to the sun because the, the that's why it's a full moon because the it's across from the sun. So it opposes the moon. The sun opposes the moon, intensifying emotional energies, especially in our relationships. During this full moon with the sun in cancer still, it's just getting ready. It moves the next day. We'll still be in the energy into Leo. So the sun in cancer is a water sign focused on emotional security while the moon is in Capricorn in the builder within us, aiming to create a secure foundation. And Cancer represents the mother. And Capricorn represents the father, creating dynamic um, energy that's emotional and practical planning. Okay, okay. so the key influences during this time period, the key um planetary influences are Saturn's influence. Saturn is ruling this full moon because Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. So it's emphasizing responsibilities, commitments, um, our drive to improve our lives. And it's time to assess whether our work is satisfying or purposeful driven. The Capricorn energy encourages us to contribute meaningful to the pursuit of our ambitions with integrity. Dur during this full moon, we may find um, it challenging to let go, especially if it involves karmic relationships or duties. However, it's time to release the karmic obligations and find relief in completing these cycles. The anoretic degree, that's when it's at that 29 degrees. That's the last degree in a house. You know, we have the, the house is like those pieces of pies and they have those little lines. Okay. So this is the last one before it goes into um, Leo. So this full moon at 29 degrees is a critical or anoretic degree intensifying the energy. And the number 29 run reduces to 11, which is a master number. And, it, you know, it's a spiritual number. It's the master builder. So, um, no, 22 is the engineer. Yeah, 11 is the master, master teacher. It's the master teacher. Indicating the mastery of soul lessons. And this degree signifies the final manifestation of something significant. Accumulation that could be both challenging but beautiful. Pluto conjunction. This full moon is in conjunct with Pluto in Aquarius, emphasizing transformation with new beginnings. As Pluto retrogrades back to the 29 degrees of Capricorn later in the year, this illumination marks the final wrapping up of long-term cycles. Expect to feel the profound sense of completion and steadiness for this new era. So um, how we nav navigating these aspects. So Neptune and Uranus, this, the full moon sextiles, Neptune and Pisces in retrograde, bringing in the visionary and dreamy energy. And the Neptune retrograde helps us see past the illusions revealing truths that were previously hidden. This aspect may invoke nostalgia, 
Make it an important to honor any grief or emotions that arise. The energy encourages us to refine our dreams and cast a new blueprint for the future. The full moon also trines Uranus in Taurus, introducing innovative solutions with new perspectives. And Uranus' uh, influence can bring unexpected breakthroughs, epiphanies, opportunities for rapid progress in this in a, it's it's an invitation to break free out of your comfort zone and to embrace the change so mars in cryon mars in gemini is going to be trying in pluto and aquarius boasting air drive and motivation this aspect supports gathering information networking and collaborating with like-minded individuals. It's a powerful time for expanding, learning, forming new connections. But however, uh, there's a T-square that forms with Cryon in Aries, highlighting sensitivities and insecurities around performance and self-worth. This aspect encourages healing by reaching out for support and advice rather than tempting to do it alone. And then we've got after that, the, the uh, next Friday, the Friday at the end of that week, we start out the week with this full moon. And then on Friday, um, Cryon's going to be going retrograde. Okay. So the aspect of uh, Venus and Jup Jupiter. So in this time period, Venus in Leo, the sextiles, Jupiter in Gemini, bringing a spark of inspiration and joy. This aspect fosters generosity, playfulness, and community engagement. It's a time to delight in activities that light you up and connect with others in a meaningful way. So this is your, you know, your practical, practical guidance for this. Energy is balancing your personal and your professional lives. Reflect on how you can harmonize your home and your work life. Are you neglecting one in favor of the other? Strive for balance that supports you both emotionally, well-being, and your professional ambitions. So it's about releasing the old and the old. Use this full moon to let go of oh outdated beliefs, habits, structures. Trust that by releasing what no longer serves you, you can make space for new growth and opportunities. So how, how are we going to navigate this communication? Be cautious. Be cautious with your words, especially with that Mars and Gemini. Like I said, go watch that. Watch the one I did. Avoid making unnecessary confrontations. That Mercury Uranus square can bring up unexpected shifts. So stay adaptable and clear in your communications. So the spiritual reflection of this. Take time for introspection, spiritual practices. Neptune trine enhances intuition, your dreams, making it an ideal period for meditation, journaling, and creative. The night before the Republican convention, I had a dream that I was working on elephants and I kept going to their eyes and doing this energy work around their eyes to heal their eyes. It was really bizarre. I woke up the next morning and I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Okay. <laughs> So pay attention to your dreams. Okay. So, so self-care and nourishment. It's one of the things you've got to do for yourself. With this heightened solar activity and intense planetary influences, prioritize your self-care. Stay grounded, stay hydrated, and nourish your body with high vibrational foods. Okay. So. The conclusion of this energy for this week that we're moving into in this full moon energy in the conclusion of this um, cycle that we that we are ending this karmic cycle this uh, on the 21st 
is a potent time for deep reflection and transformation as we navigate this intense energies of this lunar nation we are called to balance our personal needs with our professional responsibilities and release what no longer serves us or the collective what no longer serves humanity embrace new levels of awareness and growth by staying mindful and intentional we can harness the power this powerful energy to um create meaningful and lasting change in our lives so during this time period you want to move um through the rest of this year feeling more grounded and connected to yourself and your intuition you need really we it's time for us to really be in our bodies you know we've not wanted to be in our bodies because we didn't want to be in there with all that the not self and all that conditioning from the collective so um creating more ease and flows in your life together we can navigate this phase of this energy harnessing the power of transformation in our lives okay so we're going to move and move into all signs now so right before we move into all signs my little per public service announcement like share make comments do all those things that you do so the youtube monkeys can do their little tricks for me i truly appreciate that i appreciate you and the love and the light that you bring and uh um that you came at this time that you did so let's move in okay i am kimberly crow i am a western astrologer using whole sign system for this energy analysis so listen up to your rising sign it's what you came to rise to embody to evolve through you got to know your birth time to know that one your sun sign is the day you were born it's the light that you reflect out to the others what's seen as your personality and what is reflected back to you it can be your career in your chart okay and it also can be male authority figures especially if you're looking over a country a land it could be the male authority figure that rules the land okay um and did i say it could be your father in your chart it could be your father in your chart your moon is your emotional iq it's how you nurture yourself how you want to nurture others how you want to be be nurtured it's your um it's your mood it's the mood energy and it can be your mother in your chart okay so here we go aries this capricorn full moon is illuminating your 10th house of career fulfillment and life purpose the 10th house is often associated with career and ambition your vocation um, where we seek and recognize and respect we feel you feel you might feel you might feel an increase in ambition or a surge to up level your career during this time period this full moon could bring accumulation or an ending to something in your personal life such as uh, leaving a job transition to a new career or even retiring the lunar nation invites you to create um, a solid plan for your career and your life purpose you know uh, th this is like it could be what we're letting go of i forgot to say that we're going to be talking about that what it where are we at and what is it that for us to let go of so some of you might feel insecurity or the need to take back your power due to challenging aspect of that cryon in your sign you know it's been there for a while and now it's going to be going into retrograde however the tension can motivate you to take action to make decisions and to um, the revision of your career path. So embrace the dynamics, the invigorating energy of this full moon and consider seeking support or guidance if needed. This powerful time uh, is here to align your career to your passion. So if you're not doing your passion and you're not feeling, feeling it, and you can't really feel the ambition so this is ensuring you that your personal life is fulfilling and it's purpose personal driven so if there's any changes there and it's time to let go then know that it's for the highest and best 
for you. Okay. okay. Taurus, so what have we got coming in in this full moon and what could you be letting go of? This full moon in Capricorn energizes your ninth house of expansion, travel, and higher learning. The supportive trine aspect boosts your confidence and your motivation, helping you broaden your horizons. You might experience accumulation in your quest for knowledge and new experience, such as completing a course or study plan of long that or long distance travel. This illumination invites you and invites you to let go of outdated beliefs and embrace new perspectives. Pers- Perspectives. You might start a new education pursuit or engage in activities that expand you world, your whole worldview. Whether through physical travel or intellectual exploring, you're ready to take a significant step towards your personal growth. It's also time to connect to new scenery, whether it's your um in your mind or in the outer world embrace the opportunities for spiritual awakening and this new perspective that this a uh, new moon a uh, full moon brings in for you okay Gemini. the full moon in capricorn highlights your eighth house of shared resources transformation and intimacy this could bring up issues related to power to conflict, and to financial partnerships. That's your shared resources house. You might find um, yourself reevaluating the investments, retirement funds, and any shared financial responsibilities. This illumination is about finding a solid and sustainable foundation in your financial and intimate partnerships you may feel a need to change how you invest and how you allocate or network uh, a financial plan to ensure greater security on a personal level this could also be a time of deep emotional or sexual transformation that's the house of that too tantric house within a relationship some gemini's might experience significant change in their partnership dynamics such as uh, dividing assets or ending a relationships however this full moon also offers you opportunities and new visions and breakthroughs and how you manage your resources and uh, your intimate connections cancer The full moon in Capricorn activates your seventh house of committed partnerships. Uh, This could bring manifestation in your relationship, such as deepening a commitment or recognizing mutual support between you and a partner. Alternatively, you may release a relationship that has reached its karmic end. This illumination is also about business partnerships, close friendships, or any significant one-on-one relationships. You might experience harmonious in to a relationship or find that you can let go without stress. This full moon encourages you to release outdated dynamics and open up to new ways of relating. As a Cancer, You've been navigating the intense oppositional energy off Pluto in Capricorn since 2008. This full moon might bring closure to some issues that have been long standing, allowing you to master these challenges and move forward with greater ease. Leo. The Capricorn full moon in your sixth house focuses on wellness and daily routines. That's also your pets. You may find yourself ending a job or recognizing toxicity in your current work environment. The conjunct with Pluto in Aquarius could intensify these realizations urging you to let go of what no longer serves you. This full moon invites you to create a new narrative around your health and work life 
you might resolve a health issue or establish a new plan that supports your overall wellness. Consider how your daily routines and your work contribute to your energy levels. Are they draining you? Are they uplifting you? It's a great time to do a cleanse and to start a new health regimen. This um, changes can, that you make now can help you build a solid foundation in your future. Reflect on what you want in your daily life, what you want it to look like, and ensure that your work is something that inspires you and energizes you. Okay, Virgo. This is in your, this is the second full moon in Capricorn lights up your fifth house of play, joy, and pleasure. And that's children too. Okay, it's creativity. It's the house of creativity. This is one of those most delightful areas in the zodiac sign, the most fun house. Okay, focusing on creative expression, romance, and your inner child. The supportive trine aspect that you're receiving will help you tap into inspiration and creativity with ease. If you have planets or points in late degrees of Virgo, this energy, you're going to feel it more potent. Okay, the lunar nation could bring accumulation or, or um, fruitation in a creative project or a romantic relationship or something related to your children. You might find yourself wrapping a phase and opening up a new vision simultaneously. Consider the activities that let you and your inner child have fun, such as creating a vision board or acting out new stories with supportive friends. Uh, some Virgos, this full moon might signal changes in your approach to parenting or your plans involving your children. It could also be starting or launching a new creative endeavor, whether it's recording, redecorating, writing, or starting a new product line. Embrace the joy, the pleasure of this full moon has to offer you and allow yourself to dream big and let go of anything that's stopping you from that. Okay, Libra. This full moon occurs in your fourth house, highlighting home, family, and personal foundations. You may feel a strong urge to stay in and reflect, possibly leading into emotional cleanses or purges. This lunation asks you to address any tension or unresolved issues within your home environment. You could be considering significant changes, such as moving, redecorating, or shifting your family dynamics. It's also an opportunity to heal ancestral patterns and release old conditioning. The full moon encourages you to create new foundations, aligning your home and your family life with your transformed self. Oh, that feels lovely. Okay, Scorpio, this full moon in Capricorn illuminates your third house, impacting your mindset, your communication, and your daily interactions. It's time to close out a karmic loop, transform your inner narrative, and you may find yourself reevaluating your communication patterns with a sibling, neighbors, or close contacts. This illumination encourages you to create a new plan for your daily life, perhaps involving business like your website, your blog, your YouTube channel, or communication strategy. Um, it might also prompt you to change your routines, like where you shop, how you, how you um, commute from one place to another. The focus is, is in on infusing everyday reality with new energy and aligning aligning to your current vibration and what that what you want your vibration to be and how you want your uh, vibration to expand so let go of that old stuff so you can be the life that you are okay sagittarius this full moon occurs in your second house of focusing on material security self-esteem and earned income it's time to release subconscious programming related to your self-worth and your financial stability. That second house is all about how you how you see yourself in your own self-esteem and your you know that and it's a money house too. Uh, how you're valued. 
Reflect on whether you feel unappreciated or your income doesn't match your efforts. This illumination could inspire you to innovate new products or services that boost your self-esteem and your financial stability. It's also an excellent time to align your life with your values, working on self-love, self-worth. You may consider letting go of a job or financial strategy that no longer serves you, making a place for a fresh start, Sagittarius. Okay, Capricorn, this has been, this moon has been all over you. This full moon is particularly significant for you as it is the second of two full moons in your sign. Reflect on what transpired during the first full moon in, Cap, in um, the first Capricorn moon. Yeah. Okay. What happened at the solstice? Um, it's likely to um, brought something new to light. Now it's time to resolve to fix and improve upon an issue. This full moon highlights your identity and your self-perception. Influence how you see yourself in various roles at work and in personal life, family, and um, volunteer activities also. How do you serve? How do you serve yourself? What's How's your identity wrapped up in your service? As um, in your first house, it could impact the area of your life potentially verbrating into your relationships because it's all about your self-identity and how you see yourself through others' eyes too. Some of you may end a karmic relationship or transform it through counseling. The, with Pluto and Aquarius conjunct in this full moon, you're being guided towards new vision. This full moon asks you to reassess your self-image, your intentions, and it's time to release outdated roles and identities making it a way for a new era for you. The Pluto conjunct indicates transformative energies helping you recover and regenerate from the past okay Aquarius. Aquarius the Capricorn full moon is in your 12th house of the subconscious past lives deep inner foundations Akashic records this lunination marks the closing of a chapter <clears throat> and the beginning of a new era, especially with this conjunct in Pluto in your with Pluto in your sign. You're being asked to create a new blueprint for your subconscious mind and to release any outdated conditioning. This full moon supports you in breaking free from childhood conditioning past life karmic ties and it's time for rest and retreat and rejuvenation you can tap into your mystic self your divine knowing it um you may be letting go of toxic relationships jobs and elements in your life that no longer serve you so i'm seeing this like visualizing this uh, like walking into a waterfall that and embrace this time of renewal that allows yourself to heal and to rejuvenate, Aquarius. Okay, Pisces, the Capricorn full moon brings supportive sextile energy to your 11th house of friends, alliances, and dreams. This aspect is excellent for finding solutions to in new opportunities and fulfilling long-term goals. You may receive support from friends or community or um, find that that long-term dream is coming to fruition. This full moon encourages you to take steps towards solving problems or improving situations in your life. Whether it's through divine guidance, seeking help from friends, or exploring new resources, you're likely to find solutions that you need. That Levin House, it governs your the also your social media, your volunteer work, light mining communities. So use this time to connect to others and expand your network. Share your passions and the supportive aspects to Uranus suggest that surprising events or ahas um, could bring positive changes and new opportunities for you. Okay. Ah, 
now it's time for us to move in to our energy transmission so let me get centered here and see what the energy is that that wants to come up for us okay so what i'm getting is you know this is this energy is all about balancing the personal and professional lives so i'm seeing to go into your sacred chamber into your own inner committee room and reflect on how you harmonize your home and your work life Okay, so these are some journaling questions you can ask yourself or you can ask your inner world and see what comes up first. Are you neglecting one over the other? Uh, strive for balance that supports both. So ask Holy Spirit to show you how to bring that balance in for your emotional well-being and your professional ambitions. Release the old and use this full moon to let outdated beliefs and habits and structures trust that that releasing what no longer serves you it makes a space for new growth and opportunities okay so let's breathe that in and trust breathe in that energy of that so feel what that feels like so ask for that to come forth ask for it to come forth whatever it is that is holding you back for that simple to be showed to you i'm seeing like an old um what do you call it? Like a sack, you know, like a cloth sack, like a hobo sack, like a sack like that, that somebody would carry over their shoulder. And you have to know what's in it. You may want to know what's in it, but I'm getting that's from the mind to just turn it, just turn it over. So just ask for that to be turned over. So ask spirit to um, guide your words during this time period that if the energy, anything other than love comes up in you, <laughs> believe me, I've had a time with this one. I actually went into, into a level of compassion last night. I'll share that with you all at the end, what that was about. So just be cautious with your words, with your mind, in the, in the words that you're creating within your mind and, and what that does to you. So take time for some spiritual reflection during this time period some spiritual practices feel ask spirit to show you what those are for you you know it could be meditation it could be journaling it could be creative projects i mean i've sat for a month and glued glass together because that's the only thing that i could do during this time period so feel that energy of that and ask to be shown what the self-care is what the nourishment is And how do you prioritize your self-care? Okay. So breathe that in. And we're going to disconnect from that mind matrix that's out there, that monster that we've all created within humanity. So we're just going to unplug from that and bring all our psychic awareness back to us. So these answers can come to us, whether it's in our awakening time, air not awakening time here in lotman awakening time but somewhere within you you know the answers your soul the design of your soul is your body and it brought you here and gave you this innate wisdom to guide you through this human design experience and what that embodiment is so feel the energy of that trust trust your soul designed to guide you through this time period to bring in the illumination so that you may do your mission so you may be the gift and the love that you came to be so breathe in that energy of what that's like to remember the mission and that when Gaia herself when the spirit of earth called out to you and you said yes she whispered into your ear and she took your records for you and she's holding those for you so drop that energy down into the core of earth and connect to your earth purpose we're going to activate our infinity symbols of what that is, how to stand in that infinite wisdom and bring that energy up through your body to your sternum, activating your soul purpose 
in alignment with your earth purpose all the way out through your central column, out past your crown, all the way up past your transpersonal chakra to your God conscious self, your God purpose. So this aligns your earth purpose, your soul purpose, and your God purpose into one unified working catalyst of destiny. Thank you so much for all that you do. Bless you. Bless Smiley before I send her to Jesus. Because I don't know. I might have to do that if she keeps this up. I think she'd have a good time there. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for all you do. Remember, be your freaky self, freaky self and dance your freaky dance. 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 Freaky self and dance your freaky dance.